and welcome to another educational video about screen printing by Catspit Productions. Thanks a lot for clicking on my video today. I truly appreciate your time and attention. You have no idea how much it means to me that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, support me here on YouTube, and help keep me motivated, and to help keep YouTube keeping me motivated to make more screen printing videos right here on YouTube for free. You know, and not only the Catspit videos that promote some of the products that I sell at CatspitScreenPrintSupply.com, but the free educational videos that I do quite a few of. So please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel today. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate your time and attention in watching my videos. So if you appreciate them, you enjoy them, please make sure to sign up for YouTube.com today and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, so today what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about water-based inks versus plastisol inks. And I'm gonna be speaking completely from my experience and uh, what I know in my dealings with water-based and plastisol inks and what I know about it technically and environmentally and how to cure them. Some of the, some of the most important factors about water base and plastisol inks. We're gonna to touch on that today. Okay, so before I go on, I have to remind you, please remember that I sell screen printing equipment and supplies online at catspitscreenprintsupply.com and I have a storefront right here in Phoenix, Arizona where you can come in and buy screen printing equipment and or supplies right here from the storefront and take it home today. Okay, and it's also important to note that I am no longer sponsored by anybody and I do not work with any dealers or manufacturers in a way that I get compensated. So the only way I make money today is by selling screen printing equipment and supplies. And furthermore, YouTube is changing drastically and due to some of the other people on YouTube running ads, I've had to basically reduce the ad um, portion of the YouTube videos so much that it's basically earning nothing. So that means that I am now surviving completely on equipment and supply sales so I urge you, if you need some screen printing equipment or some supplies, please check out my offerings because I have some really, really good deals. And in my opinion, I have some of the best presses on the market with the best features built by screen printers for screen printers. So give me a call if you have any questions about equipment or supplies. First off, what are the basic differences or the most major differences, if that's grammatically correct. What is the major difference between water-based and plastisol inks? And it's really two things that concern people most in deciding whether to use water-based or plastisol inks, okay? The first thing is this. Plastisol inks never dry until they're heat cured at about 330 degrees Fahrenheit for up to a minute or longer depending on how much ink you print. The more plastisol ink you print, the more heat and the more time it will take to thoroughly cure the printed ink layer from top to bottom. Okay, so with plastisol inks, the heat cure is very critical and it often requires more equipment than that of water-based inks. Okay, so, Contrastingly, water-based inks are heat set, okay? And what we normally do with water-based inks is we print them and we allow them to dry by evaporation perhaps, and then we run them through some kind of dryer. Or if we're lucky, we have a forced air belt dryer or a forced air flash cure, and we can cure water-based inks very efficiently with those types of units and we'll talk more about this later, the curing. Okay, so water-based tanks are heat set normally around 250 degrees or 275 degrees Fahrenheit, and that can vary specifically on the brand 
of water based ink you're using. So make sure to check with the brand. Call the people you buy the ink from to get the specifications and technical information on how to use it. Okay, so that's number one. The Plastisol ink needs to be heat cured at about 330 degrees Fahrenheit with a little bit more equipment like belt dryers. Okay, um, water based inks, on the other hand, are heat set at a lower temperature, maybe around 250 degrees, and they can require less equipment as far as heat setting because we can do it with an iron, we can do it with a heat press, or we could do it with a standard infrared belt dryer as well, or a flash cure, and we'll talk more about that as well. So that's the first major difference between Plastisol ink and water-based ink. And quite frankly, because of that, Plastisol ink is much easier to learn with and start with because it does not dry in the screen on the press while you're working. Okay, so water-based inks tend to be a little bit more challenging to learn with because they dry in the mesh while you're working if you don't work fast enough and don't follow a few tips that I've covered in the past in my other videos that you watch, right? Okay, so that being said, the second and more important factor may be the print itself. Now, Plastisol inks will have brighter colors, more durable colors, the print will last way longer. I don't care what anybody says, a Plastisol ink will outlast the shirt. A Plastisol print will outlast the shirt. The shirt will have holes in it before the Plastisol print does if you print it properly and cure it properly. Okay, but a Plastisol print tends to be a little bit rubbery, a little bit heavy, and a little bit thicker than that of a water-based print. And in the industry, sometimes when we print on black garments where we do a white underbase and then a bunch of colors on top, we get this really patchy type print that we, we often refer to as bulletproof, okay? Or as the sweat patch, okay? So there are ways to deal with that with Plastisol ink and it's all about the artwork. Okay, now again, contrastingly, water-based inks tend to have a little bit duller colors. They're, they're actually really good today that you can get some bright colors in water-based inks, but they will tend to not be as durable, possibly fade over time and washings and stuff like that. And traditionally speaking, the water-based inks just don't have the brightness and the durability that Plastisol inks have. But, of course, like I said, there will be exceptions in some of the new products that are out on the market today where you see some very bright water-based inks. And some of them hold up pretty well over time. But the point of the water-based ink print is that it is in the fabric and there's not much ink printed. So in that respect, the lesser volume of ink printed also has an effect of the longevity of the print. What that means for water-based inks is that since we're printing a lot less volume of ink and the water-based ink is very thin and it tends to uh, sit in the knit of the fabric rather than on top of it, like Plastisol, we get a very soft feeling print. And that print is known as, or that feel, is known as soft hand. Okay, so a lot of people today like the water-based inks because when you touch them, it feels just like t-shirt and it's very comfortable to wear and it breathes very well, especially in the hot summertime. Okay, so the water-based inks give you a softer feeling print, whereas the Plastisol inks give you a thicker, stiffer, more rubbery print. Okay, so now what's next? What else can I tell you about water-based ink versus Plastisol ink? I mentioned curing water-based ink as opposed to Plastisol ink earlier. And this is really the reason why I'm making this video is to talk about the differences in curing Plastisol ink and water-based ink. 
And the question that I get all the time, can you cure water-based inks with a standard infrared belt dryer? And the answer is yes, you can. Okay, but you have to remember that me, as a professional screen printing equipment and supplies dealer, when you ask me how do I cure water-based inks, I'm going to tell you that you're going to need a forced air flash cure or a forced air belt dryer. The reason is, is because for production and commercial work, we want to be able to print the water-based print and take it off and throw it into the belt dryer right away. The deal is with water-based prints is it's a two-part process that makes them wash safe. The first part of the process, the solvents or the carriers, the water or petroleum solvents, whatever they may be, need to evaporate out of the shirt, leaving only the ink, the pigments, the stain in the shirt. Okay, And at that point, it's important that we have to actually heat set that pigment in the fabric with you know, some heat, about 250 degrees or so. Okay, so ideally, we want a forced air flash cure or a forced air belt dryer because that allows us to take the shirt off the pallet with wet ink, with the solvents, wet, 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 and throw it through the belt dryer. And the forced air is going to evaporate the solvents, and then the rest of the heat and time in there is going to heat set the pigments and make them wash safe. Now, with plastisol inks, we have to heat cure them at a much higher temperature and possibly for a little bit longer time. So for plastisol inks, we use infrared belt dryers, okay? But a forced air belt dryer can certainly cure plastisol and water-based inks. And it just so happens that the forced air dryers that I sell, you can turn the forced air off if you like. Okay, so, but you actually, you could leave it on. It'll, it'll cure the plastisol ink even that much better. Okay, the forced air dryers with that hot air going down on the shirts and stuff are just very efficient at curing t-shirts, plastisol ink, water-based ink, or whatever, you know, is, is uh, suitable for that kind of oven. Okay, so, um, so the plastisol ink needs more time, more heat to cure, but it can go through a standard infrared belt dryer or a forced air belt dryer, and that's okay. All right, now let's talk about how you might deal with water-based prints and a standard infrared belt dryer that does not have forced air. Okay, so usually when somebody is printing water-based inks and they don't have a forced air dryer or a forced air flash cure, what they'll do is simply one of two things. They'll either run the shirts through the dryer twice, the first time evaporates the solvents, the carriers, right? The second time, heat sets the pigments, okay? The other way you can do it is you can actually print all the shirts and take them off the press and lay them about the shop flat. You know, you have to have a little bit of space to do this, especially if you were doing like 500 shirts, right? Takes up a lot of space. So you'd have to let, let them sit out flat and let the moisture evaporate you know, by evaporation, by air. Air to ink, you know, yada, 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 okay? It'll evaporate that way. And then you can take the shirts and stack them because at that point, they're dry to the touch, but they're just not wash safe. At that point, you run them through the infrared belt dryer and they will be heat set and thus wash safe. Okay, so does that make sense? And please note that by no means am I anti-environmental or anti-water-based ink. I actually use both inks. When I printed commercially, I don't print commercially any longer. I do all cat spit stuff now for you guys doing the videos and stuff because I sell screen printing equipment and supplies, right? So I don't screen print anymore. But when I did, I used both inks. Whatever the customer requested is what I used. Uh, some customers really didn't care or have any clue about inks. So you go default plastisol. Um, some customers know about the water-based inks and they ask for them specifically. So you use that for that customer. Okay, so, 
So if you're planning on being a commercial print shop, ultimately you should be able to juggle both Plastisol and water-based inks. Another difference between Plastisol ink and water-based ink that I can say, generally speaking, is the consistency or the thickness. Generally speaking, Plastisol inks are thicker and a lot more difficult or more difficult to work with. So we tend to use mesh counts as low as possible for the design. There are Plastisol inks that will be thinner, like black inks or navy or reds and stuff like that. Certain colors can be very thin in Plastisol, but high opacity colors, uh, white, especially high opacity white, those are going to be kind of thick, like toothpaste. And, you know, when you tip the bucket over, they're not going to pour out, okay? Contrastingly, again, water-based inks are going to be thinner, a lot thinner. And, you know, if you tip a can of water-based ink over, it most likely will pour out. If it's a, like a high opacity white ink, it might not. Um, it should, though. You know, uh, most water-based inks tend to be a lot thinner than Plastisol inks. And generally speaking, we want to use higher mesh counts with water-based inks. So, for instance, if we were doing Plastisol inks, we would prefer mesh counts from 125, 110 mesh, 125, 160, 200, you know, depending on what detail we have. Then for water-based inks, you know, you're going to start, most likely, you're going to start at a higher mesh count, like maybe 160, 200, 230, stuff like that, depending, again, on the detail in the artwork and what you're printing. You know what I'm saying? If you're using a white ink that's pretty thick and water-based, you might use, again, a lower mesh count. Okay, but generally speaking, you know, Plastisol inks tend to be thicker and a little bit harder to print with, especially when we print white ink on black shirts, okay? And water-based inks tend to be a little bit thinner and runnier and a little bit harder to control on the screen and stuff like that. So that is another major difference between water-based and Plastisol inks. So let me just reiterate that yes, you can cure water-based inks with a standard infrared belt dryer. And in fact, there are a lot of people that do it every day, all day long. And uh, you know, even with my equipment, um, I have several customers that have standard infrared belt dryers and they use Plastisol and water-based inks and they run it through the same standard infrared belt dryer. So it's completely possible. You just have to work out your process, do a couple wash tests and be sure that you're happy with the results. Okay? And please, again, once again, remember if you like my videos, subscribe, rate, thumbs up, comment below. Check out my offerings at catspitscreenprintsupply.com and make sure to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.